Hello and welcome to Forest New Life Church Daily Devotions. My name is Avril and for the next 10 minutes I will be talking about identity, which at times I feel can be a real challenge and not just for me but for all of us because where do we find our identity? The Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Corinth, therefore if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone, the new is here. And that was in the NIV, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. And in the King James Version, it reads, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. So the simple truth is this, as Christians, our identity is found in Christ. And Tom Wright wrote in Paul for Everyone, 2 Corinthians. Verse 17 was one of Paul's greatest summaries of what Christianity is all about. In the original Greek language, Paul would have said, if anyone in Messiah knew creation, what a wonderful declaration. So why then have I struggled with my identity? Identity means distinguishing character in the Oxford Dictionary. Who a person is, qualities of a person in the Cambridge Dictionary. But for me, my identity over the years has been referred to as a child, I was known as Ruth and Derek's daughter. At school, I was known as Mark Lewis's sister. As a wife, I was known as Dr. McLean's wife. As a mum, I became known as Joel's mum, Lydia's mum, Eve's mum. And now as a nan, I find myself often referred to as Luca's nan. Sometimes I've just wanted to shout out, I have a name, I am Avril. But all of these roles have shaped me. Being a daughter, being a sister, a wife, a mum, a nan and a friend, but they don't define me. So where do I find my identity? Where do you find your identity? Let's pause there and let's ask that question again. Where do I find my identity? Is it in my work? In my role at church? In my community? in my family. When I was preparing for today's daily, daily devotion, I really felt God say mistaken identity. You see, I think some of us have found our identity in our doing, not our being. So I'm just going to take a moment and I'm going to invite you to join me as I pray. Father, I bring you my mistaken identity and I ask for forgiveness for finding my identity in my doing rather than in my being. Father, I ask today that you come and speak to me and reveal something new to me about my identity, which is found in you. Amen. Sometimes it's important just to pause and to take the moment. As a child, my gran gave me a signet ring. I don't know if you can see it. Um, it was for my eighth birthday. Now you may know or may not know, but signet rings were known as a gentleman's ring and worn on your pinky finger. I've never worn mine on my pinky finger. They were a symbol of family heritage. Many centuries, uh, many families wore them and they had their family crest on them or their coat of arms. And they were used as a, to seal letters and to authenticate. They were for identification. You see, I have had this room for many years and I never had my initial engraved on it. 
In 2011, I decided it was time to have my initial engraved on my signet ring. My journey of identity and discovering who I am in Christ has been a long, arduous journey. Because it's not been about my doing, but about my being in Christ. I'm just going to share a short reflection with us. And I'm going to read the story of Mary and Martha, which I know is so familiar to all of us. And I'm going to read to you from the message. And that can be found in Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. Mary and Martha. As they continued their travel, Jesus entered a village. A woman by the name of Martha welcomed him and made him feel quite at home. She had a sister, Mary, who sat before the master, hanging on every word he said. But Martha was pulled away by all she had to do in the kitchen. Later she stepped in, interrupting them. Master, don't you care that my sister has abandoned me in the kitchen? Tell her to lend me a hand. The master said, Martha, dear Martha, you're fussing far too much and getting yourself worked up over nothing. One thing only is essential, and Mary has chosen it. It's the main course and won't be taken from her. We know this is the story of two sisters, and Martha was always busy doing, while well, Mary had chosen to position herself at Jesus' feet. I wonder today, who do you identify with? You see, I personally find it incredibly hard just to come and to be. I am far more naturally like a Martha who wants to be busy, who wants to be serving or leading or doing. And I get distracted by so much going on around me. You know, should I? Could I? Well, maybe. So I've had to be intentional in choosing to position myself at Jesus' feet and to be taught by him. Those of you who know me would know that my favorite time of day is early in the morning and I like to get up and I like to make a coffee and come and find a quiet place before everyone else wakes up. And that is my favorite time of day, just to read my Bible, just to pray, just to reflect and to be still in peace. But now we have Luca, uh, my grandson's favourite thing to do early in the morning is to come find his nana and uh, we have biscuits and coffee and I adore that new tradition. But what it's meant is that I have now had to be intentional in carving out a time of day where I can just come and be with my heavenly father. Now, I'm just going to ask you all to pause for a moment and to breathe, breathe in. Breathe out. And I'm going to ask you a question. You can close your eyes or you can keep them open. Where is Jesus in the room right at this moment? Where is Jesus in the room right at this moment? You see, Jesus is right here beside me. And I love that thought, that Jesus and I have that kind of relationship that we can just come and be together. Just as I come to the end of today's daily devotion, I'm going to read out the words of worship song written by David uh, Bilbra. I am a new creation. Now, you're at home. So you can sing it and rock to it, or you can play it on YouTube and just worship. But I'm just going to read it. I am a new creation, no more in condemnation. Here in the grace of God I stand. My heart is overflowing, my love just keeps on growing. Here in the grace of God I stand. 
and I will praise you, Lord. Yes, I will praise you, Lord, and I will sing of all that you have done. A joy that knows no limits, a lightness in my spirit, herein the grace of God I stand. Be blessed, have a great week, and I look forward to seeing you next Friday for our daily devotion. Thank you.